gentlemen, Larry Shea. <laughs> develop new tools for performance. And so I've been working with VR and mostly augmented reality. And um, so I want to look at these two diagrams. I prefer the diagram on the left. I think the diagram on the right has an implicit assumption that there is a real world that is somehow not mediated. And I would say that you know this the, the on the left for me is kind of more accurate. And um, you know I don't want to make assumptions about things. So let's let me tell a story about electricity. Um, so we all love electricity. It's one of those um, habitual things that when he was talking about. But how did I get around experiment and why? Um, my project is an attempt to tell stories about complexity of the present moment in real time at specific sites across the city. There are many commercial ventures for looking at touring apps, but this one will be very different because my intent is different. And I um, thank Brenda for helping me figure that out yesterday. Uh, for example, I'm looking at um, the development of the electric infrastructure in Pittsburgh. Um, here's a corner in East Liberty, close to East Hotel. Um, in 1927, two industries were required to create a current reality in movies and utilities. Uh, the movie industry had vital beach sets here in Pittsburgh. Nickelodeon started here, and through trial and error, they developed a distribution, pricing, <laughs> and advertising structure utilized to make Hollywood what it is today. Um, across the street in 1886, East End Electric installed a five hour dining hall in the basement of the Coombs Confectionery to light the streets and the business. One of the earliest uses of electricity for the public. Um, all the early electric utilities open storefronts to sell electronic consumer boxes directly to the public. They would even drop off back in the units to welcome new households for a trial week, and then when they returned to pick them up, the housewives would inevitably sign a contract right there to keep the wind changing out sense. Um, so how do we tell stories about this kind of reality? Um, where should one start? What format is suited for this complexity? Um, you know, we live in a world of views and information and imagery, audio, PhD dissertations, novels, newspapers, fiction, film, documentaries. It'd be nice to access them somewhere not like on your laptop in your living room. Um, so, what if we told this story about electricity in Pittsburgh, talking about Nikolai Tesla, who was the inventor of electric current, or maybe Frank Conrad, um, he was a Westinghouse engineer, who started uh, tinkering with radio transmissions and got uh, following people who, um, uh, would listen to his uh, implanted records. Or maybe he had a great great figured out how to make uh, moving images. But these were all white men, and you know, it gets a little boring. Um, but we talk about George Westinghouse. He hired Tesla to compete with Edison and won the Battle of the Currents. Or H.P. Davis, who recognized Frank Conrad's popularity and was key to developing broadcast radio um, and realized it was a way to make a huge market for electricity. Uh, Harry Callahan, we're going to find his photo. He, um, Created, he cornered the market in Pittsburgh for distributing films. So all the all the Nickelodeons had um, all the all the Nickelodeons had like kids running around this town with um, uh, distributing the films, and he cornered that market and made a lot of money. Um, or maybe we should look at the vacuum cleaners, the radios, and the Nickelodeons, the machines that invaded our homes, brought us news of the real world, and seduced us to enter their dark caverns of delight. Um, or maybe the infrastructure. Electric grids, broadcast radio, the movie industry. Uh, the World Columbian Exhibition on the left there in 1893, Westinghouse won the contract and supplied electricity um, using Tesla's AC system, which really pissed Edison off. Uh, let's see, KDKA was the first broadcast radio station in the country, in the world, in Pittsburgh. Um, and uh, the movies, well, we all know the movies. Okay, so how about places, God? I think. So my project um, is designed to actually tell the stories from locations. People are pretty good at navigating space. They go back to the same places over and over. Um, so they, the project will use the environment itself to tell these complex stories, exploiting people's innate odd affordances for wayfinding, place making, and world building. So what will this look like? Here are three um, student projects from a class I taught. Uh, Alicia Ott, who's just up here, made Graphonic, which is a, um, an audio tagging app where you can go to a location, leave an audio file for a friend, send them a text, they can go to that location and hear it. Uh, Death in the Compass.
Office was a multi-location uh, Borges story that the students, uh, that the students uh, did across campus. And uh, the Pittsburgh Career History Project and Sakamoto and team uh, used this wonderful database of ephemera from Pittsburgh's history to um, create a, an app where you could go to the location of a former gay bar and you could unlock the sound file, which we're listening to one of them now. Um, so, so in the spirit of Deep Ward's Yariv, um, we can all come to the doors. We can understand the present moment by wandering through the city, uh, experiencing these artistic and curated experiences, and dancing up quite late last night to make a visualization of what this might actually look like. So this is like our first pass of what it might look like uh, in a web interface. So you could be able to go home and uh, after you've had these experiences and build up uh, locations and uh, personalities and organizations or uh, concepts into an interactive database. Uh, I'll give you that as the Black Instructor Coalition. Uh, they were uh, formed in the 60s to promote uh, uh, allowing a lot of sites because there's a lot of complicity, uh, a lot of uh, racism in the hiring practices. Uh, anyway, so from that point, well, that's Frank Conrad. So from here, you can connect to like broadcast radio or you can connect to the that sold sold his radio sets, stuff like that. Um, and then it should advance. <laughs> and that's how it might look. December 1st at 3LD is a show that I'm working on. We made an AR app uh, that is used in the show. Okay, thanks, Mike.